What's up, you guys? This is your girl, Silver Disobedience, bringing you the latest in celebrity hip-hop news. I want you to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel, Sherlock Homegirl. Today, we're doing a rant and a wine where we will be discussing the allegations of sexual assault against T.I. and Tiny. I want you to be sure to comment below what you think and share. Um, just a warning, some of the information may be uh, a trigger. It, it, we will be talking about things of a sexual nature. So viewer discretion or audio discretion is advised. So let's get ready to get into our rant and wine. Thanks for listening and subscribing. What's up, you guys? This is your girl, Civil Disobedience, bringing you the latest in... I thought threesomes were a thing, news. I want you all to give this video a thumbs up. If you have any technical writing needs, whether it's grant applications, business proposals, resumes, term papers, holla at your girl, comment below, and I will give you my email address. But let's just go ahead and get into it. Okay, so recently several different women have gone on record and here's the thing i don't know if they've spoken to legal counsel or if they're just on instagram me tooing about the whole situation i'm not sure however they're saying that they were sexually assaulted by ti and while the stories that i've read and heard do not involve tiny per se as in being in the room they're trying to say that she was aware of the situation and that she was a part of it. And I just want to know what you guys think about this. Um, one woman was saying that T.I. was balding up ones and throwing it at them like baseballs instead of making it rain on them. Another woman said that her friend gave T.I. fellatio for about six hours and I do intend to keep this as decent and in order as possible um, without, you know, saying anything vulgar. But it is talking about some vulgar situations. And so I personally feel like a lot of it, ladies, is us not being honest about things we're not into. And simply because a person has a certain amount of celebrity, a certain amount of money, something that we want. We're willing to bend a little bit in what it is that we will and won't do in order to accomplish whatever goal you have set for yourself when it comes to this person and what they may or may not have. Now, I appreciate T.I.'s uh, response, which is any woman who has an accusation deserves to be heard. And if those accusations prove that she's a victim, she deserves to be vindicated. That's basically, you know, without saying it verbatim what he said, that's, you know, blow by blow what he was basically getting to. Um, however, I do agree with the fact that if you're just saying that you're not happy with the way a situation went and you didn't allow yourself to speak that truth in that moment, what do you expect T.I. or anyone to do now? that that situation is over with. If I ask you if something is okay, and this is one thing that I, and I'm not rich. I do not come from, I come from people who are educated, but we can't boast millions of dollars like that. However, I have seen people, women specifically, put themselves in very serious situations with men. Not because they were so much interested, but they were looking at what they felt they could accomplish. He may like me and we may start dating seriously and he could marry me. Um, and I'm not talking about any men in my family. I'm just saying the circles that I've ran in, the relationships that I've been in. I've had women call me and tell me negative situations about my husband and we weren't even together anymore. And I'm like, well, sis, what are you telling me for? I'm, I left him. What do you want me to do? It's like they want me to sister wife with them to get him told. I'm like, quit him. Don't go, go, don't go around him anymore. Leave him alone if it's that bad. And I feel like a lot of it is people taking things. A lot of women 
do things thinking that they're going to take that man from the woman he's with. And I can't reiterate enough. You don't know what these women are putting up with to hold those relationships together. So stop wanting to fill that woman's shoes. That's the first thing. Two, if you don't like something, ladies, speak up. It's fine for you to go cry on someone's shoulder and we put it on Instagram and me too about it. Slut walk of shame all over the planet about it. Whatever you feel you want to make yourself feel satiated and satisfied, cool, satiated. However, when it comes down to it, sis, you're going to put yourself in that situation again. If you don't learn how to say, I don't like that, don't do that, stop that. You don't just have to say no. There are a billion things that you can say. And I'm not, we, we, Layla Lynn, shout out Layla Lynn. She did a really good job with her commentary on two types of fetishes she feels T.I. may have. And she, in what she stated, could be very much giving us the truth. He may very have, the, very much have these two types of fetishes. And I'm not going to get into all that because I didn't look it up, so I don't have the definitions. I'm just simply giving commentary on what I feel a woman should do in these situations when you're faced with people who are putting you where you don't want to be. It's cool he has these fetishes. If you're not in agreement to those things, get out of there. Leave. Okay, one woman in the Instagram story stated that her homeboy stopped T.I. from bothering her, but instead of leaving, she went into another room with her homeboy to smoke or chill or do drugs, whatever they were doing. So if that's what you're doing with your homeboy, you were comfortable enough to stay. You don't know what any other agreement was made between anybody else. And this is another thing I want to tell all these so-called famous, so-called rich celebrity, whatever you want to see yourself as men. My granddaddy says, when you go to do dirt, do it alone. You don't need all these people around you while you are involved with a woman. Let that be private and personal. That's number two. Number three, both parties involved should discuss in detail what their expectations are. If the transaction is business, whether it's sexual or not. Some of the women are saying they were paid for sex. However, it is not the type of sex. And I, like I said, I don't want to get into detail. Just go and check out the stories yourself. It wasn't what they expected. They didn't like it. We get paid to do jobs. We sit down. We make negotiations prior to accepting or contracting on the position. And we still get on the job and say, boy, I didn't know I was going to do this. I didn't know I signed up for this. This was not a part of what I expected. Well, that's the same thing if you're a sex worker. And I'm sorry if I'm not, if I'm one of those people who don't feel sorry for a person who got paid for sex and it wasn't the time. That's why you got paid, love. People weren't willing to do it. I don't, I mean, it's T.I. If it was regular sex, wouldn't women be lined up to do it? He paid you to do it because other people weren't willing to do it. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to victim shame because a lot of what victim shaming is, is us stopping investigations and making it where people can't just go ahead and say, well, I, I find some holes in the story on this. You know, it's some holes there. There are some things that are just not adding up. It's to keep us from looking further into it because everybody and their mama were walking around here acting like threesomes were what it do once upon a time. And now it's like, what is going on when you have people who you're not even being forthcoming with these people when you're getting involved with them? Like, that's scary. I'm glad I wasn't ever into anything like that. And considering even if that was something that was something I wanted to do, I'm so glad I because you can't even well, how do you know if they're telling the truth or not? And while yes, you can revoke consent, 
But I think it's very important that we stop allowing people to victimize themselves after the fact. You went through the situation, you woke up the next morning, you went home, you felt bad about it. Now you're able to call Lisa Bloom and everybody with the Me Too movement and get everybody on your team so that you can go out there and hunt these people down and see them in prison. Why not claim the fact that you did something you didn't like with someone you weren't that into and vow not to do it again? That would serve you a better purpose in life than just simply trying to act like you were sexually assaulted. I mean, one woman was saying, the woman who said about her friend giving T.I. fellatio for six hours, all I'm thinking to myself is, like, at, at any point, nobody said, dang, it's been six hours? Like, how was he supposed to know any of this? And I'm not taking up for anybody, and, and just so people know, while I feel like all of it has been a legal scam slash sham on Cosby, Kells, and now T.I., and I do it, I believe it's on Russell Simmons as well, I'm not feeling sorry for you men because you're running through too many women and you should know these women don't like you like that. Who are you? You made a couple of million bucks. Like, that's it. That's who you are to those women. You made a rap album. You made a label. You you were you made us laugh on TV. You made a couple of hit records. That's what you did. Stop allowing yourself to become validated in your wrongdoing by women who do not like you. And I guarantee you, the women I, I bet you tiny tiny, they were trying to say something about Camille. They were trying to say something about Andre. Baby, you can't tell me these women knew anything about that crap because they're not validating them in their wrongdoing. That's why they're out there funding all of those extra women. And this is where sister code or female code or whatever y'all want, girl code, should come into play. Because instead of saying, yeah, what another woman won't do. And I remember that Miss Kitty lady who was on that Lifetime uh, documentary with R. Kelly, um, that whatever, Surviving R. Kelly documentary. She was on something else back in the 90s. And she's one of the women who helped to make that phrase, what another woman won't do, what one woman won't do, another woman will. She, was, she helped to, to popularize that phrase. Just because she won't do it, sis, doesn't mean you you have to. Maybe that's what he needs to hear. It's consistently, I don't like that. Where you get that from? That's not something I'm into. I'm not into that. It's the validation, the false validation that's big upping these men. And yes, I, as a woman who lost my husband, who lose men consistently, because I, I forgive them. I don't hold no grudge. But I'm quitting you after a certain amount of things. Because I feel like, let me do the next female you come in contact with a favor by teaching you this is something that women don't have to take. That's how I feel. And I feel like more women should subscribe to that train of thinking. Learn to speak up for yourself. Learn to go ahead and say, no, this is not something I want to participate in. And if this is something you want me to participate in, then you and I should just not deal with each other. So this is your girl, Civil Disobedience. I want you to hit that thumbs up. I want you to comment below what you think. Uh, share, subscribe to my channel. Peace.